Nestled in the rugged landscape, this ruined castle invokes a sense of mystery and history that is quintessential to the Scottish Highlands. Built in the early 1600s by Sir Duncan Campbell, the seventh laird, this castle was more than just a residence. It was a stronghold that embodied the power and influence of the Campbell clan, one of Scotland's most formidable families. Sir Duncan Campbell, known as Black Duncan due to his stern and formidable demure, he played a crucial role in expanding and consolidating his family's influence in the Scottish Highlands. Duncan was responsible for the constructions of numerous castles, including this one, and the improvement of estates under his control. During his time as Laird, was marked by shrewd political manoeuvring, acquiring land and fostering alliances that solidified the Campbell's dominance in the region. Despite his reputation as a harsh and ruthless leader, his contributions to the Campbell legacy were significant, leaving an indelible mark on the history of the clan and the Highlands. The castle is a prime example of Scottish Tower House, a type of fortification that was common among the mobility during the late medieval period. The Tower House was designed with both defence and residence in mind, characterised by its thick stone walls and rectangular layout. While much of the castle has succumbed to the ravages of time, the remnants of the structure will convey the robustness and simplicity of its original design. The castle's architecture reflects the practical needs of the time, protection from its enemies and harsh weather, while also asserting the social status of its occupants. The strategic location of the castle on a rise near Loch Tay provided a commanding view of the surrounding lands a crucial advantage in an era when clan rivalries often led to skirmishes and territorial disputes. The early 17th century, when this castle was constructed, was a period marked by intense clan rivalry and political upheaval in Scotland. The Campbell clan was one of the most powerful families in the Highlands. Their control extended over vast territories and they played a pivotal role in Scottish politics, often aligning themselves with the Crown to consolidate their power. The construction of the castle was not merely an architectural endeavour, but a statement of dominance symbolising the Campbell's authority in the region. The castle served multiple functions. It was a residence for the Laird and his family, a court where justice was administered, and a fortress that could be defended against enemies. Adjacent to the castle is a small chapel and burial ground, which further underscores its significance as a family stronghold. The graves of several Campbell family members are located here, marking the site as an important place of memory and legacy. The castle's most mysterious features can be found just outside its north wall, where there is a stone-lined rectangle pit. This almost certainly served as an actual water tank to hold water running off the roof of the castle in the absence of a well, but folklore has chosen to interpret it as the beheading pit. The other location for the said heading pit, which is more likely, is said to be a circular depression near the chapel. Here, executions of enemies of the Campbells and noble criminals. Once they were sentenced, they lost their heads. But this was only for the noble class. If you were a common criminal, you would have been hanged. There is said to be an oak tree close to the beheading pit, known as the hanging tree, where the main branch of the tree was cut down in the 1920s. It was ported to have deep grooves in it, and if so, then it would be no doubt caused from the ropes. This grim feature adds a layer of dark history to the castle, reflecting the brutal realities of life during this period. 
in a time when law and order were often enforced through severe and public punishment. While I couldn't find any ghost stories of this place, which was a surprising concerning its dark history, there was an eerie feel to the castle and the area around, always feeling like you were being watched, and on this occasion I was glad I wasn't on my own. A little to the east of the castle stands the heavily overgrown ruins of Bredalban Mausoleum. This was built in 1830, possibly on the site of a chapel built in 1523 by Sir Colin Campbell, the third laird. The Chapel of the Blessed Virgin was the traditional burial place for the Campbells. The mausoleum that replaced it is in almost as poor a state as much as the older nearby castle, the state of the stonework looks, if anything, even more precarious. The mausoleum had presumably already fallen into disuse by 1922, when Sir Gavin Campbell, the 17th laird, was buried nearby, to be followed by his wife, Lady Alma Graham, in 1932. Today, the Celtic stone crosses which mark their graves, occupy a site which follows centuries of family tradition. But they look a little forlorn and lonely, standing almost in the shadow of the ruins of the castle and the mausoleum. Today, this castle is in ruins, which most of its structure have collapsed over the centuries. However, it remains a site of historical importance recognised as a scheduled ancient monument by the Scottish Government. The ruins, enveloped by a dense woodland, have an atmospheric quality that draws visitors interested in Scotland's history and heritage. In the broader context of Scottish history, this castle is more than just a relic. It is a symbol of clan systems that shape the social and political landscapes of the Highlands. The castle stands as a testament to the Campbell's legacy and the role in Scottish history. As visitors explore its crumbling walls, the surrounding grounds, they are not just witnessing the remains of a building but connecting with a crucial chapter in the heritage of the Scottish Highlands. This castle endures as a monument to a time when the fortunes of families and the fate of territories were shaped by strength of stone and the will of those who commanded them. Who knows what secrets were once held behind these now ruined castle walls, the stones, worn and weathered by centuries of wind and rain, have witnessed countless tales that have long since faded into the mist of time. These walls, now crumbling, once stood tall and proud, guarding the lives of those within. They may have witnessed passionate romances hidden from the world, or bitter betrayals just turned brother against brother. Perhaps, Within these walls, grand feasts and celebrations echoed with laughter, while in the shadows, whispered conspiracies were hatched under the cover of darkness. The castle keeps its secrets well. The corridors that once bustled with life are silence their stories trapped in the very stones that encase them. What intrigue, what drama, what moments of fleeting happiness or deep despair unfolded within these walls. The ruins take an air of mystery and melancholy, 
the once imposing fortress reduced to little more than a skeleton of its former self, stands as a silent monument to the past. It invites the imagination to wander, to ponder the lives that once were confined within these walls. The walls may be crumbling, the roof long gone, but the essence of the stories remain, lingering like a faint perfume on a forgotten breeze. Who knows what really went on behind these now ruined castle walls? Perhaps only the stones could tell us, if only they could speak. But until then, the truth remains hidden, lost to history, leaving us to wonder and dream of what once was. Before I go, I would like to say a big thank you to the viewers and subscribers of the channel, to the Patreons and to those who have bought me a coffee. This channel wouldn't be the same without you. Your support has made it all worthwhile and I'm grateful beyond words. So if you're new here, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and hit that notification bell so you'll never miss an update. And until the next time, stay safe.